Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a console tutorial on transport and absorb adsorption. Adsorption, not absorption. So I chose this one because like all my tutorials I'll do on this channel, it is using COMSOL multi-physics module only. And it was uh, a good um, example of chemical engineering core concepts, which is my background. I do apologize for the background noise. That's my little space heater, but it's snowing in late May in Colorado and it is cold. So, um, that's going to be in the background. Sorry about it. So this example demonstrates how you can model phenomena defined in different dimensions. Let me take my gum out. 2D and 1D in this example in a fully coupled manner using Comfell multiphysics. In this particular case, the model involves a small parallel plate reactor with a catalytic surface. Similar applications where surface processes are of critical importance include biochip devices and semiconductor components. When modeling chemical reactions, the reaction rates are usually functions of the concentrations of the reactants and the phase that transports the chemicals. However, for surface reactions, it's also necessary to account for the surface concentrations of the active sites and surface adsorbed species. So we're talking about adsorption here, meaning uh, some species diffuses from bulk stream through pores, possibly in this case, it's just onto the surface of a silicon wafer as the substrate, where it's absorbed on adsorbed onto the reaction site or the active site. For surface reactions, it's also necessary to account for the surface concentrations of the active sites and surface adsorbed species. The mass balances in the bulk of the reactor must therefore be coupled to the mass balances for species present only at the surface of the device. All right, so before we get into the model definition, let's just take a look at the picture. As one of my favorite professors ever used to tell us, um, the first step of any problem is DAFP. So draw a freaking picture, but the F doesn't stand for freaking. So here's our picture in 3D. So we've got a rectangular section here, a modeled cross-section plane, and an active surface. Now, because they mentioned this might be, um, the context of this could be a small parallel plate reactor with a catalytic surface like biochip devices and semiconductor components. The first thing I thought of is a parallel plate reactor such as PACVD. So a direct plasma, plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition where you've got a um, substrate, a silicon wafer here that's either suspended from the top or uh, secured onto the bottom. And then you've got the top electrode, you've got gas in, pumps on the other side and a RF generator, so a radio frequency generator. Um, there will be some gas, silane, it could be anything, it depends, right? It depends on the process, we don't really care. All we care about is the active surface or the silicon wafer, as I'm imagining it, it doesn't specify here, but you know, it always helps to look at a problem with some idea of a real physical problem, like a real world um, problem you might be using this for. So if this is a parallel reactor, we've got gas flowing in from the bottom over the wafer that's secured on the active side and gas out. So we've taken a 3D model and simplified it into a 2D model. And A is going to be species A and AS is going to be the active site, um, let's see how did A and AS are the molecular species in the gas and adsorbed on the active sites on the surface respectively. 
So A is the concentration of this reactant in bulk, and AS is the adsorbed concentration. And this reaction will be dictated by this reversible uh, reaction with forward reaction rate KF and reverse reaction rate KR. All right, so that is one, one step in the entire reaction but it's the um, rate limiting step if we're looking at an adsorption, desorption uh, limited mechanism. Okay, so that's the beginning, the theory for transport and adsorption. And I feel like almost every tutorial I've done here on this channel has been 2D and 1D. There was one um, rock fracture one I did so far that was 3D. But the point is most problems can be simplified. So while it might be useful or pretty to do a 3D simulation, it also might take several hours when you can get a much faster snapshot of the problem and insights quickly by doing a 2D or even a 1D simplification of your model and you know uh, what's the joke about spherical cows like physicists make everything into a sphere uh, or point body so <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know what the punchline is but simplify where you can okay so uh, we're gonna let phi uh, is that how you say that simplify be the fraction of active sites occupied by adsorbed molecules. The fraction of free sites is then 1 minus 5. Langmuir, Langmuir derived that the rate of desorption of molecules are desorption in units of moles per meter square per second. Um, so what is that? That is a flux, right? Uh, something per area, meter squared, per time, second. So a rate reaction is in fact a flux. It's proportional to phi and equal to kr phi, where kr is a constant, at constant temperature. Therefore, the rate of absorption of molecules is proportional to both the fraction of free surface sites, one minus phi, and to the rate of which molecules strike the surface. The collision rate is in turn directly proportional to the partial pressure of the species, Pa, and the rate of absorption in moles per meter squared per second is thus R adsorption equals Kf Pa quantity 1 minus uh, times quantity 1 minus uh, phi, where Kf is a constant at constant temperature. To set up transport and reaction equations in terms of C, bulk gas concentration of A in moles per meter cube, and CS, which is surface concentration of A in moles per meter squared, <clears throat> make the following substitutions. So let's just point out one distinction here. We're making C is in units of moles per volume meter. So we've got something per volume and something per area. That's the difference in dimensions, and then we're going to make the following substitutions. Phi equals surface concentration over gamma s, which is the total surface concentration of active sites in moles per meter squared, and Pa equals CRT. This is just a simple PV equals NRT derivation using the ideal gas law. Note we are making an assumption that the gas behaves ideally. Otherwise, you can't use the ideal gas law for this. Um, P, so PA would be the partial pressure of the substance, meaning P over big P equals NRT, uh, PB equals NRT, and N over V gives you the concentration. So that is a direct one-step derivation of the ideal gas law to partial pressure of eight. Um, 
R is the gas constant, T is the temperature, and using all of these equations we get the rate of desorption is equal to the rate constant desorption, K does, times Cs, the bulk or the surface concentration of A. And the rate of adsorption is equal to the rate constant for adsorption times the bulk concentration of A times quantity total surface concentration of active sites minus surface concentration. Um, okay, where this is the rate constant for the desorption reaction and this the rate constant for adsorption is the rate constant. Yeah, I said that. So another distinction to make here is a difference in um, dimensions when it comes to the desorption rates and the adsorption rate constants. Desorption, it's in, it's in units of volume per mole per second. Adsorption is in units of inverse time. Okay, and that goes to our original definition of these and also back to the units of the bulk gas concentration and surface concentration being different. Okay, everything has to come out with consistent units. Units, units, units. And I also tutor math to middle schoolers, high schoolers, college students, and units are consistently forgotten, overlooked, not cared about, so I like to share the story of the Challenger and the loss of life that occurred because an engineering group made a mistake in the transfer of information between two groups that one group thought they were using English and another was using metric and there was a fatal mistake which caused an explosion and I believe seven deaths units matter and take your time to do dimensional analysis because every problem relating to a physical real world problem has safety implications okay so the surface concentration is in moles per unit surface we covered that the material balance for the surface including surface diffusion and the reaction rate expression for the formation of the adsorbed species cs partial surface concentration with respect to time plus del negative diffusion uh, ds is the surface diffusivity times del surface concentration equals the rate of adsorption minus the rate of desorption so what we've got here is just a simple expression of our N minus out plus uh, reaction equals accumulation. So change in concentration with respect to time, uh, that's our N minus out, this comes from the mass balance, mass in from the gas flowing in, minus mass out from the gas flowing out that has not reacted plus diffusion of the adsorbed species. So you have some gas just flowing on by, some gas adsorbing and diffusing, and some gas being reacted. Uh, so the rate of adsorption minus the rate of desorption. This gives the following equation for the transport and reaction on the surface. All we did was direct substitution here for our expressions of the um, rate of desorption and rate of adsorption and the direct substitution in here to get this. Equation two defines the units of the rate constants K adsorb and K desorb. The initial condition, so remember we've got to have boundary conditions and initial conditions for this partial differential equation. So if we look at how many conditions we're going to need. We've got one time condition we need here and since we already said we're defining this as a 2D problem, we're simplifying a 3D problem into 2D, 
that means this del will have an x and a y component. Technically, it has an x, y, and z, but we're simplifying it and saying um, only in two dimensions. So it'll have uh, two boundary conditions for the x and two for the y. So at t equals zero, concentration at the surface equals zero. The equation for the surface reaction is expression includes the concentration of the bulk species C at the position of the catalyst surface. Thus, you must solve the equation for the surface reaction in combination with the mass balance and the bulk. The coupling between the mass balance and the bulk and the surface is obtained as a boundary condition in the bulk's mass balance. This condition sets the flux of C at the boundary equal to the rate of the surface reaction and is presented below. The transport in the bulk of the reactor is described by convection diffusion equation. The initial condition sets the concentration in the bulk at t equals zero to c equals c naught. All right, so we've got a initial condition up here for the adsorbed species, and then an initial condition down here for concentration in the bulk. So two different things. Remember, we've got gas in the bulk and then gas that's actually absorbed to the surface. So two initial conditions. And then the above equation D denotes the diffusivity of the reacting species. C is its concentration and U is the velocity. In this case, the velocity in the X direction equals zero. Well, the velocity in the Y direction comes from the analytical expression for fully developed laminar flow between two parallel plates. U equals zero, where U, the velocity, equals this expression. Here, delta is the distance between the plates. V max is the maximum local velocity. And x equals zero at the left boundary of the 2D model geometry shown. Okay, boundary conditions for the surface species are insulating conditions according to equation four. N times uh, negative ds, del cs equals zero. For the bulk, the boundary condition at the active surface couples the rate of the reaction at the surface with the flux of the reacting species and the concentration of the adsorbed species and bulk species. So we get N times negative diffusion constant, del concentration plus concentration times velocity equals negative K adsorption rate constant times concentration. So we've got the adsorption rate, which is negative because that is decreasing the concentration and a positive for the rate expression of desorption because now that's adding to the concentration of the species we're looking at. The other boundary conditions for the bulk problem are inlet. At the inlet, concentration equals C naught. At the outlet, we have this condition, the diffusion convection equation, and we also have an insulation condition. Okay, so notes about the implementation. This example deals with a phenomenon occurring in a 2D domain coupled to another phenomenon, diffusion reaction. So we've got a convection diffusion phenomenon coupled to diffusion reaction phenomenon occurring only on a part of this domain's 1D boundary. Model the 2D equation using a transport of dilute species interface and the 1D equation with a general form boundary PDE interface on the active surface boundary. The two interfaces are coupled through the surface reaction rate expression on the right hand side of equation two, which becomes a flux in the boundary condition equation five for equation three. So here's equation five and here's equation three. Um, oh, also we're gonna be using the Neumann condition for equation four which is a natural boundary condition, meaning you don't need to impose it explicitly. So let's get started now finally with actually modeling. From the file menu, choose new, model wizard, 2D. In the select physics tree, select chemical species transport and transport of dilute species. Click add and next in the select physics tree, select mathematics, PDE interfaces, lower dimensions, general form boundary PDE, 
GB in parentheses and click add. So we've got two coupled physics here we're going to be looking at. So in dependent variables table, we're going to change dependent variable from U to CS. I type over U with CS as the dependent variable. I'm going to make this match. The field name matches the dependent variable and click study. Oh, I didn't pick time dependent. Done. And let's go ahead and save this as um, transport and add absorption. We're going to get started on global definitions. So let's see, I didn't save this before, so we're going to have to go back here and just, uh, okay, so we'll copy this, open a text file, open a text file. paste it in there and save. All right, then let's go back to our PDF here. All right, so we're going to go to global global definitions parameters one. So I'm in the model builder window, global definitions parameters one, and the settings locate the parameter section. Click load from file. So it's a little folder icon here, and I'm just going to open this text file, and there you go. It automatically populates everything here. We've got all the boundary or all the conditions we described earlier, the initial concentration, forward and backward rate constant, active site concentration, surface diffusivity, gas diffusivity, maximum velocity and channel width. All right, now we're going to build the geometry. So in the model builder window under component one, click geometry one. In the settings window for geometry, locate the unit section. And we're going to change this from meters to millimeters. In the geometry toolbar, click rectangle. So up on top, I'm going to go to the geometry tab and click rectangle. All right, so we're going to make it have a width of 0.1 millimeters and a height of 0.3 millimeters. Uh, remember, this is a, well, let's build it first and then we'll talk about it. Okay, lo locate position in the Y text field, type negative 0.1 and build all objects. Okay, so we've got a channel. Uh, these are such tiny dimensions because remember we're talking about you know mono layers or maybe uh, multiple layers but very very thin layers when you talk about a mono layer it's one molecule adsorbed to the surface of our uh, now we're going to build a point in geometry toolbar click point little dot icon and the settings window for point locate the point section and in the X text field type 0.1 so locate at 0.1 millimeters build all objects so there's our point right here and now we're gonna build point 2 so I'll click point again and this time X is gonna be at point 1 and Y is gonna be at point 1 right and there's our second point here and click the zoom extents. Everything's showing already, so that won't change at all. Next, we're gonna define the variables. In the home toolbar, click A equals variables. So I'm going to the home tab here at the top, 
and clicking this A equals icon. So this is variables. And now we're going to define some local variables. In the settings window for variables, I'll get the geometric entity selection here and choose boundary. So instead of entire model for geometric entity level, we're going to change it to boundary. Select boundary 5 only, which is our active region here. Um, as I have described our hypothetical, this would be the parallel reactor, parallel plate reactor, and this would be the region with our um, substrate, the silicon wafer, is the active site. Does it make sense with these dimensions? Uh, I don't know, let's see, this is a 0.1 millimeter, that's 100 microns. That doesn't really make sense. I guess in like a laboratory, uh, that'd have to be a really tiny wafer. Maybe if you're in like, uh, if you're doing bench scale and not very large scale VLSI, if you're not in a fab, if you were just like in grad school doing one tiny silicon chip, that's the only way I can make this make sense in my mind. Otherwise, how would you have only a hundred micron? Your gas is flowing over, over an active site that's only a hundred microns thick. Anyway, continuing. Um, okay, so we selected boundary five, locate the variable section, and in the table enter the following settings. R so we're going to enter variable R, the surface reaction rate. I don't love that they've made this a capital R because there's already an R constant, the universal gas constant. Um, but I'm going to do it to be consistent with the tutorial. So uh, the expression for the surface reaction rate is given by K adsorption, the reaction uh, constant for adsorption times the concentration, little c times gamma s, and this is all the background theory we went over at the beginning, minus the surface concentration, and then, so that's the, oh, and I already made a ty typo here. So this first part, that was the adsorption reaction rate term, and now we're going to do minus the desorption reaction term. So, okay, so variables two. In the home toolbar, click A variables and choose local variables once again. So we're just doing the same thing. And um, now we're gonna change this to domain. Before we click boundary, now it's domain. Domain one, which there is only one domain. Look at the variable cell section and in the table enter the following settings. Why do we do this two different times? Because the first one was for boundary and the second one is for domain. So we have two different types of local variables we're de defining. So this one's going to be VLAM, the inlet velocity profile, given by V underscore max times one minus x minus 0.5 times delta divided by 0.5 times delta to the power of 2 in parentheses inlet velocity profile. Right. And now we're done with our geometry, we're done with our local variables, we're moving on to the physics, transport of diluted species, TDS. 
So in the model builder window under component one, transport of dilute species, click transport properties one. In the settings window for transport properties, locate the diffusion section, which is right here. And in the DC text field, type D. So instead of this default value, I'm gonna type D so it'll reference the parameter the variable from our text file we input earlier. Locate the convection section, specify the U vector as, so here's the convection section, U for the X is gonna be zero, that stays the same, and Y is given by V underscore land, so that's the um, local variable we defined with this expression. So it's going to grab that from the fully developed laminar flow in this region for every y coordinate. All right, so it's in TDS. And now we're setting the initial values. In the model builder window, click initial values one. In the settings window, we'll click initial values, and we're going to change zero to C0. C0. So this is the concentration at time equals zero is C0, or the initial concentration. And we defined that earlier as well. Now we're setting the concentration one. So we have to go to physics toolbar up here, boundaries, and concentration. So we're adding a concentration boundary condition. It's like boundary two only. So that's our inlet here. See, boundary two is appears in green when I hover over it. And when I click on it, it's added to this box for the boundary selection. In the settings window for concentration, locate the concentration section. Select the species C checkbox. And in the C not C text field, type C not. All right, now we're adding a flux condition. Click boundaries and choose flux. Select boundary five only, which is our active region. So it's gonna be a flux condition because remember when we were going over theory, the reaction rate is in fact a flux. In the settings window for flux, look at the inward flux section. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a flux condition because we have um, some flux of something per area per time flowing over it, over this region. Okay, select the species checkbox. So we're checking that. And in the J0C text field type, negative R. So remember, R was the reaction rate um, that we defined earlier. And this R couples both the, let's see, how did it word it from the background information? What was our equation five and three? So this is what we typed in. This is R. Um, the boundary condition at the active, this region here, the active surface, couples the rate of the reaction at the surface with the flux of the reacting species and the concentration of the adsorbed species and bulk species. So there's a lot going on here. This is probably the most complicated boundary condition and the most important to describing what's going on here. So everything we defined with this local variable where we said R equals K adsorbed times C times gamma minus uh, gamma S minus CS plus the desorption rate. This is R, and that is our boundary condition for the active site. All right, so we're done with the flux condition. Now we're going to do, we're going to add an outflow condition. So we did inlet active, now we're doing outlets and physics toolbar click boundaries outflow and click boundary three only and the physics toolbar 
Oh, so that's all we had to do for outlet. It just needs to know what's our inlet, what's our outlet. There was no additional information we added here. Okay, symmetry. So now we're adding a symmetry condition under boundaries, symmetry. Select boundaries one, four, and six only. So one is the left side. Four and six are the right sides that are not the active region. All right, so we're done with TDS, transported to loop species. We're moving on to general form boundary partial differential equation. Um, GB for short. So next, set up the equation and boundary condition for the surface concentration, CS. In the model builder window under component one, click general form boundary PDE. And in the settings window for GB, locate the boundary selection section here. From the selection list, choose manual. Click clear selection. So you'll see it defaults to selecting all six boundaries. So we're going to clear selection. Um, so this icon with a broom over a blue square is clear. Uh, look at the unit section. Click define dependent variable unit. So our custom unit is going to be moles per meter squared. And in the source term quantity, so this one down here, we're going to do the same thing and change the unit to mole per meter squared per second. All right, so that should have fixed the issue um, in our variable one. Yep, so remember this was appearing as yellow because it said inconsistent units. So when we define the custom units here, it resolved that issue. So now it's showing up in black text because um, it's got consistent dimensions. I should make a video just on dimensional analysis. We should do that. I think it's it's worth it. So this is showing the equation, assuming study one is time dependent. And all right, in the settings window, expand the equation. Comparing this equation with the equation one in model definition leads to the following settings. Locate the conservative flux section. Specify the gamma vector as so our conservative flux is here and we're going to find the gamma function as negative cstx times ds and for the y component same thing negative tsty times ds here cstx and csty refer to the components of the gradient nabla Yes, restrict it to the plane tangential to the boundary where the interface is defined. That is boundary five, the outlet here. And it, boundary five is the active region, sorry. Because the boundary is parallel to the y-axis, only CSTY is non-zero in this case. We'll get the source term section in the F text field type R. Okay, so our source term has the R we defined up here. The, um, this is the saying the source term occurs at boundary five. I know we don't have boundary five selected here, but that's the only place as we, as they explained here, where CS2Y is non-zero. Okay, moving on to initial values for the PDE. The default initial value zero for the surface concentration applies for this model, so you do not need to set it explicitly. So it just so happens that CS is zero for our model, but if that weren't true for your physical model, you would need to input your actual surface concentration for time zero. All right, so that was the physics modules. We set all of the initial values and boundary values, uh, boundary conditions. 
Now we're ready to create the mesh. So we're gonna do a free triangular mesh here. In the mesh toolbar, which is right next to physics, we're going to click free triangular, and then for the size, right click free triangular one and use size, and right click here, size. So you see that I didn't click size right above it. We right clicked it and hit size. So size appears actually uh, now nested under free triangular rather than the default size that is nested under mesh at the same hierarchy as free triangular. So that's important. Um, so under size one uh, from geometric entity level, choose boundary and locate the element size section. Click the custom button. Uh, element size, click custom. Okay, so we're changing from predefined to custom. Locate the element size parameter section. Select the maximum element size checkbox. So you can either do minimum, element size, maximum element growth rate, curvature factor, resolution of narrow regions. We're just gonna click maximum element size and in the associated text field type 1.5 microns. So if you put units in hard brackets like this, we're overriding the default units of millimeters. And then I have to have this selected. So when you click on boundary five, it appears here. And then maximum element size, 1.5 micron, build all. All right, so that's the mesh. Moving on to the study, finally. So under step one, time dependent, uh, we're going to select time dependent and in the settings window, locate the study settings. In the output times text field, type range. Uh, so we've got the range defined here, or you can click on this icon to the side. And this dialog box pops open. So we're starting at zero in steps of 0.05 seconds. And ending stop at two seconds. All right, oh, okay, so when you do that, it actually adds a range, so I'm gonna delete the first default range. And now we're ready to compute. So I'm gonna click this compute button here. You could also go to study and hit that compute button. It does the same thing. Um, let's see. So it comes out like this to begin with. And then you just go to the concentration under results, you have concentration TDS. Um, so we're gonna change the label on this to concentration species in reactor, just so it's a little more relevant. And then so that's just changing the label. And then for data, we're gonna select time equals two. So you can select any time from time equals two Let's just see what time at 1.45. There's time equals 1.45 seconds, and here's two seconds. All right, so this is the fully developed uh, profile of the concentration species in the reactor at two seconds. And now we're gonna create a plot of the final concentration at the reacting surface. In the home toolbar, click add plot group and choose 1D plot group. So we're going to home, add plot group, 1D plot group. The settings window for 1D plot group type concentration reaction species, label text field, concentration reacting species along active surface. That's a long title, but very descriptive. All right, and locate the data section from the time selection list, choose from list. Uh, so our data sets, the list we're given provides all times in the range that we gave, right? From time zero to two in increments of 0.05 seconds. So from the list, we're just gonna choose two seconds. 
as our data input for this 1D plot, and then right click concentration reacting species along active surface, surface and choose land graph. So it changed the label that appears over here in the model window when we typed it in. So we're just going to right click on that and select line graph. And now we get to choose a boundary as appropriate. So we only want to choose boundary 5 because that's the only place we care about um, the adsorption and desorption in the concentration of the species. Okay, so in the settings window for line graph, click replace expression in the upper right hand corner under x-axis data, not y-axis data. We're going to change the parameter from arc length to something different. So I'm going to hit the red and green replace expression button and then under component 1 choose geometry, coordinate, and y-coordinate. So we're changing the x-axis to the y-coordinate and plot. All right, that looks better. So we've got concentration versus y-coordinate. So along the active region, you can see concentration of species A, or as we've titled it here, the super long title, concentration reaction species, reacting species along active surface. So species A enters the active region gas is blowing over it and it goes from a very high concentration to a much lower concentration and then rapidly drops off as it crosses the active region of 0.1 millimeters or 10 microns and then it increases at the end here why because you're at the end of the active region so there's no longer um, adsorption sites available. So now you've got free gas flowing back into our uh, free reacting species with nowhere to adsorb to. So it's just going to diffuse back into the bulk flow and exit at the outlet. Alright, so that was for the line graph one. Plot should look like that in figure three. Um, yep, this is figure three. This is at time equals two seconds. Now we're going to create this graph. So in the model builder window, right click concentration reacting species along active surface and choose duplicate. So this duplicate option, you can also do control shift D and you'll see another one appear right underneath it. So we're using the work we already did here as the starting point and we're going to add and change some information. So now we're going to type concentration adsorbed species instead of reacting species add adsorbed species along active surface uh, and then click line graph 1. Right, so line graph one. So now you see the label changed in our model builder window. And in the settings window for line graph, click replace expression in the upper right hand corner of the y axis data. Okay, so now we're changing from concentration on the y axis to component one general form boundary PDE. CS dependent variable in moles per meter squared. So we're changing this from concentration to surface concentration, which also changes the units. And click plot. Oh, and then what I forgot to do was select all the other times. So I'm going to reselect this, and before we had just chosen times two time equals two seconds. Now I want to choose multiple times to get an idea of how it's changing. So I'm going to select 0.05 seconds, 0.5 seconds, one second, 1.5 seconds, and two seconds. So you just have to hold down control while you're selecting all of them. 
and then hit plot again and you get all of these um, so there's no legend you can easily add one I want a legend show legend there we go so here's our legend 0.05 seconds is at near the beginning and you can see the surface concentration increases as we approach two seconds um, so we start out very near zero and it increases to almost 0.3 moles per meter squared at the entrance of the active site and as the gas blows over it towards the outlet of the channel and then we have a, a decrease as it's passing over the active site and then an increase as it's leaving the active region. All right, now uh, finally we're going to reproduce the plot in figure 5 of the surface reaction rate at the same times. Again, use the previous plot group as the starting point. So we're going to duplicate this one we just created. Right click, duplicate, or you can do control shift D. Now we're going to name this one um, here's our new one. So I'm going to go to label and change it to surface reaction rate. The surface reaction rate along active surface Again. and um, in the model builder window expand the surface reaction rate along active surface node and then click line graph so next I'm just going to click on line graph one in the drop down menu of this newly changed label um, and in the settings, we're, again, we're going to change the y-axis data from surface concentration to replace expression with component 1, uh, definitions, variables, and we're going to use R, the surface reaction rate that we define. Double click, populates here, click plot. Well, I don't know why the legend is doing this, but they didn't have a legend in there, so maybe that's why. So I'm going to remove the legend, but you can see that at 2 seconds, it's this purple line. At t equals 0.05 seconds, close to beginning, it's this blue line. So with increasing time, the surface reaction rate actually decreases. Um, which makes sense if you compare this. Concentration adsorbed species. So if the, species, the adsorbed species is increasing, with time, then that means the reaction rate is going to decrease with time. Because remember, we've got competing effects here. The reaction can only happen as fast as it has available species A adsorbed to react. So if the species adsorbed to the surface is increasing as we go from t equals 0 to t equals 2, that means that at t equals zero, as soon as the species A adsorbs, it's getting reacted, like instantaneously. And with time, it slows down. I just want to make the point why the reaction rate decreases with time. So part of it is available surface area for collisions in order for that reaction to happen. So at the beginning, we've got a substrate, say, in the active region with nothing but available surface area for collisions and adsorptions to occur in subsequent reaction of species A. But as time progresses, we've got more and more sites that are occupied um, now unavailable for adsorption and unavailable for collisions with reactant species and so the reaction slows until there is essentially no reaction happening which is what you see at the end of the active region at time equals zero before it 
again, increases at the edge of the active site. Okay, so there's the concept there. Um, the other idea would be why is it higher at the entrance of the active region on both uh, low times and high times? Well, we also have diffusion recall. So, um, if we have a higher concentration before the gas is entering, it's by default a higher concentration of species A. And diffusion also, or uh, things always move from areas of high concentration to low concentration. So there, there will be a natural diffusion in the positive Y coordinate direction with time as well as convection because the gas is also blowing this way. So you've got um, some diffusion once it's adsorbed it can also diffuse to the right. So that's why you'll have a constantly higher reaction rate as the gas is entering than as it's exiting. Alright, so finally, the last thing we're going to do, um, we already hit zoom extents. Alright, so in the model builder window, under results, click 2D plot group 2. And in the settings window, type concentration. And the label, I'm going to overwrite 2D plot group 2 with concentration adsorbed species at active surface in the label. And now in the model builder window, expand the concentration, click line one, so our new label appears. And under line one in the model builder window, expand, uh, I already did that, click line one, and in the settings window for line, locate coloring and style. So we're going to change the coloring and style line type to tube and select the radius scale factor. Radius scale factor we're going to check and put 0 0.005. Data set is study one solution one time equals two seconds and plot and we get this. Now this is just showing a gradient. Um, the concentration of adsorbed species at the active surface. So this is the third thing we just kind of discussed showing we have a higher concentration, surface concentration at the entrance of the active region and much lower across the majority of the active region. All right, so that's it. It's dark now. This took a really long time to get through, but I thought it was really interesting. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you, you want to see more console tutorials, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next one.